What's up, people? Fire here from Amazon.com, and in the previous video, we have the camera following the players. So, what is the next step to do? The next step is to create the enemies and put them in our game. So, uh, let us see how we can do that. But hey, if you want to try my game development, if you want to try my game, if you want to try out my game development academy, so now I have it right. You can do that for two bucks. Link will be in the description below. So, uh, what we can do now is here we're gonna click on the plus button. So, this is going to be our empty scene, and this is where we are going to create our zombies. Now, let me just double click on this node scene and I'm going to rename this one to red zombie because first we are going to have the red zombie. Now, well actually the green one, whichever one you prefer. But what is the issue here is that we need to change. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to change the type of this node because it is going to be a kinematic body. So yeah, a kinematic body. And I'm going to save that one here in the scenes folder. I'm also going to right click on it and add a child. This is going to be our animated sprite. So click on the animated sprite and double click on it. And I'm going to call this one animation because we are going to need this bad boy. And uh, selecting the animated sprite, let me just clear everything here, going into the animation. So clicking over here, clicking here on new frames. We are going to create a new frame. This is going to be our walk animation and this is the green zombie. So let's go over here. And in the enemies for the sprites, we have the zombie green, select all these images. So all the images and put them over here. So if I zoom on our zombie and click here to play, you will see now the zombie is playing, but I'm going to add 12 frames so that he plays a little bit faster because I believe 12 frames is okay. Yeah, 12 frames is okay. You can pump it up if you believe it's not okay. So yeah, that's up to you. I'm going to select the green zombie game object and go here, add node, and I'm going to add a collision shape 2D. Now for the collision shape 2D, we need to select here a shape. So it's going to be a rectangular one and I'm going to simply move this over here in the middle and resize it. So move it a little bit more in the middle, something like this. And the zombies animation is confusing me. So I need to uncheck it so that it doesn't play. And now I can simply resize this dude and voila, we are good to go. So this is going to be our green zombie. This is everything we need to do for him. If I go over here in our scenes, I'm going to duplicate the green zombie and I'm going to call this one red zombie. So we're going to have a red zombie. I'm going to duplicate the green zombie again and I'm going to call this one ghost. So select here the red zombie and double click here and I'm going to change this one to red zombie. And selecting here the animation for the sprite, I'm going to select all these frames or actually I'm just simply going to delete all of this and create a new animation for the walk and go simply here inside of our folder and select all the animations for the red zombie and simply put them here. That's all we need to do. Everything else is going to be the same and doing the same thing for the ghost. So here it is, ghosty, ghost, 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 I'm a ghost, 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 ghost. Anyways, here is a ghost. <laughs> we need to do the same thing, select the animation here, delete this one, so the walk one needs to go, you gotta go walk one, no delete notes, click on the animation, delete it, click here on a new anim and I'm going to call this one walk, let's go over here and frames are, frames are going to be 12 and also for the red zombie over here I forgot that we need to put the frames at 12 so this animation is well played. And let's go over here in the enemies and we have the ghosts, select all the ghosts Put them over here and voila but for the ghost we need to move this a little bit here something like this can do just resize a little bit more and if i play it let's go here in the animation and play it this is our ghosty ghosty look at the ghost look at the ghost so yeah basically these are our animations and i can go here inside of the scripts folder and right click and I can create a new script. This is going to be a new C-sharp script. So let's go over here, new script. And I'm going to call this one monster. This is going to be a universal script. You're going to attach it on the go. So let's go over here and load and scripts and monster. So attach it on the monster, red zombie, select it. Go here under scripts and load, scripts and monster. Green zombie, go select it. Go here, scripts, empty, load and let's go under scripts and monster. So make sure that it is attached on every single one of these enemies. And let me just go over here and make sure that you check these animations so that these animations are playing. So let's go over here, the animations are playing and let's go in our visual studio. And for the monster, what do we need? 
First of all, the monster is also going to inherit from Kinematic Body 2D. Make sure it's a Kinematic Body 2D. Don't, make, don't click or don't select Kinematic Body only. So it's going to be a Kinematic Body 2D. Let me just let me just put this over here. So what do we need in order to move our zombies? Well, we need the move speed, so it's going to be private float move speed. By default, I'm going to say 600 because I want the zombies to move fast as the speed of light. We're also going to have a private gravity, so private float gravity, which is going to be equal to 20F. We are also going to have a private vector, so private vector 2, this is going to be our movement. And you can see where this is going. I'm going to do the same, the similar thing I did for our player. We are also going to have here a private, or actually it's going to be a public one. So here I'm going to say public bool move left to determine if we're going to move left or right. And we're also going to have a public bool is ghost. And because we don't want the ghost to be at the... We don't want the ghost to be at the bottom or actually landing on the ground because the ghost is floating. That's why we're going to check if we have a ghost. We are also going to have here a private float minimum underscore X and a maximum underscore X. Now for what you're going to use these, well, simply here in our gameplay, I'm going to click on the plus here and actually no, not here. I'm going to click on this link, which is going to allow me to, let's say, for example, attach the ghost. And I'm going to take the ghost and somewhere over here, okay? So this is going to be the minimum. So the minimum is going to be negative 5,090. So that is the minimum X. So here we can go and we can say minimum X is equal to negative 5,900. And I said 90, but it's actually 900. So I can take the ghost now and not, let me just go over here. What did I do? I put it as a child of the main camera. So let's see, negative 5,900. Okay, it can also be here. So yeah, it can be that value. I don't care because we're going to queue it. That's why here, let me just go and not the background, but select the ghost and over here, let's say 6,650. Yeah, 6,650 is going to be the maximum max. So let's go over here. Maximum is going to be equal to this value. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to have the bounce because when the zombies or the ghost or whatever goes out of the screen, we don't need it anymore. So we are going to kill it. We're going to queue it. And that's why we're using minimum and maximum. What is going to happen inside of the ready function? Well, we're going to determine, first of all, if this dot name is equal to ghost. So if the name of this game object or this node holding the script is the ghost, we're going to say is ghost is equal to true. Now we are also going to check here if move left, so move left right here. If we are supposed to move left, we need to say here move speed. So move speed is going to be multiplied equals to, so multiplied equal to by negative one F. And then we're going to say here, get the node and the node is going to be animated sprite. And the name of that node is animation. And then simply we're going to say flip horizontal is going to be equal to true. This is if we are moving to the left side. If we are moving to the right side, we're not going to do this. But if we're moving to the left, then we are going to do it. And simply here in our physics process, so here I'm going to say underscore physics process. This is going to be the physics process. Here we're going to say movement like this dot y and we're going to say plus equals gravity. But we are going to check if this is not the ghost. So if not the ghost, then we are going to do that. Now pay attention here. I added an exclamation mark. What is an exclamation mark? Well, it makes what's after it the opposite. If this is ghost is true, this will make it the opposite, which means it will make it false and voila. But if this is ghost is false, then what we're going to do is, well, if it's a ghost, actually, if it's not the ghost, excuse me. So here, as you can see, I'm adding is ghost. I'm saying it to be equal to true if this game object or node has the value or name ghost. So if this is not the ghost, we are going to add the gravity. And as I said, if this is ghost is true, then this will make it the the opposite, which is false, and this right here will not be executed. But if this is ghost is false, this will make it the opposite, which is true, and this will be executed. Simple as that. And simply here, I'm going to say movement 
So movement.x is equal to move speed, and then we're simply going to call here movement is equal to move and slide, and here we're going to pass the movement, simple as that. And that is all we need to do. And we can test this out and not over here, here. And in order to test it out, I'm going to go here and let's say I attach the ghost. So let's see, let's see, I've attached the ghost. Let's, I'm going to put the ghost over here and I'm going to command B. So let's see if this actually is going to work. So now the ghost should come from our right side or left side and we, that is the case, but the ghost also went out of the screen. So we need to kill the ghost. That's why we have the bounce. So let's go over here. And what I can simply do is I can test if the position dot X is greater than the maximum X or if the position dot X is less than the minimum X, we can queue free. So we can queue free our zombie or the ghost or whatever. Again, notice here, if the position X of that game object, be that the ghost or whatever, if it's greater than the maximum X, queue free, or if it's lower than the minimum x then q free this means this is an or operator or however it's called this means only one of these needs to be true so this can either be true or this can either be true if both of these are not true only then we will not execute this q free but if this is true if only one of these is true then we will execute it. by the way notice here i don't i didn't add parentheses or curly brackets because if you only have one statement after the if statement, if you only have one line of code after that, you don't have to call, you don't have to call curly brackets. So you can do it without curly brackets, but only if you have one line of code. If you add here another line of code, for example, int a is equal to, I don't know, 15 or 12 like this, then this will, this right here, this int a will not be executed inside of the if statement. So again, remember that. And we cannot test this out, unfortunately. We can, I mean, if we follow our game object and all of the good stuff, but let me just try to do this. I'm going to run the game and try to run over here. But since I've added the value to the zombie, he will move faster than me. You see, he will move faster and let's hope. And here we need to put the correct or arrange the backgrounds correctly. So yeah, as you can see, we don't see him anymore. You can do the exact same thing to put the bounce for the player. This will be your homework following this tutorial. So do the exact same thing to put the bounce on the player. And here I made a mistake for these bounce. Yeah, for the background, but this is, well, easily adjustable. So don't worry about that. Anyways, this was about our monsters. The next, in the next video, we're going to start spawning them in our game. Then we are going to start detecting the collision, all the good stuff. Anyways, if you want to try out my academy, two bucks only, click the link below and I will see you guys in another video.